before we get <laughs> before we do get started, mm-hmm. I've been I've been reading a whole lot of just weird and wonderful crap over the last sort of week, yep. and just like uh, a lot of history things and whatnot. And I come across the history of the word dark. Now, dark spelled D-A-R-K, but a lot of things is with a C-K, right? But you know why they didn't put a C in dark? Don't know. Because you can't see. Because you can't see. (laughs) Oh, my God. Oh, jeez. Are you you serious? We're running with these kind of jokes now? We've dropped what's that sound? And in... This position in the podcast, we have these jokes. Oh my god, Snoogs, I left it in your control. What have I done? Editing Lucas here, a little bit shocked, but let's see what the rest of the show has. Oh my baby. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> I walked into that one. You walked oh, into it. Uh. <laughs> yeah, I was thinking you were, you were that impart some wisdom on me. <laughs> Ah, oh, you missed that one. Well, let's get on with the show anyway. Three, two, one, zero. We recommend wearing headphones. This is the Unnamed Experience. News, reviews, and outlandish fun. Experience it all. What's up, everyone, and thanks for joining us for episode 245 of the Aussie Gamers Experience podcast. Today is Monday, the 11th of February, 2019. I am your host, Snoogs, and keeping me in check this week are my brilliant co-hosts, Ramutha and Greggio. Rem, welcome back. No, thank you. Welcome back. (laughs) Feeling better this week? Uh, Slightly. Slightly? I mean, I can... I can talk this week, which is always good. That's always a good start. <laughs> and Greggio, how about yourself, bro? I, I am well. You're well? I am well. As, as well as can be on a Monday I'm evening. Back, back, to, back to normal life. I'm back to, back to work now that I'm not looking after my poorly wife. So, yeah, life is so back to normal. It's back to your poorly wife looking after you. <laughs> yeah. Something like that. <laughs> she does a pretty good job, so... Ah, uh, brilliant. All right, well, I'm going to kick off this week's episode with another rendition of This Week in Gaming. And This Week in Gaming, we don't go back as far as we did last week. We're only going back as far as 2010. A game that Ooh. was very close to my heart was released on the PS3 in Australia and New Zealand. And that game was the Sony exclusive Mag. And do you guys remember that game? Oh, I, I, I remember it. I remember you playing the hell out of that game. I did, didn't I? I, got, I, got yeah, I was like, it. but you want to play something? He's like, yeah, I want to play Mag. Come play with me. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm playing Mag. <clears throat> and I have a copy. I didn't play it. <laughs> well, Mag was created by Zipper Interactive and published by Sony Computer Entertainment. It actually holds a Guinness World Record for the most players in a console f- FPS with 256 players, which I think is a bit of a cheat. Yeah. Because it was sort of 64-player matches, and you're all on the same server at the same time, but you're in one area. So 64 players have been in one area, and then another 64 in another one, and so on and so forth. Mm. And a little bit sneaky, but it meant that there was 256 players on at the same time, and so... Technically, you could you could run up to the edge of the map and hear fighting on another part of the map, which was pretty cool as well. Right. But it only lasted for a mere four years. Servers were shut down January 28th, 2014. There you go. Gone. Online only. Can't play it anymore. Uh, you got yourself a nice little coaster. This is true. What, mm. Whatever happened to Zipper Interactive? I'm not entirely sure. You know what? That's my homework for next that's, week. That's I'm going to find homework, out yeah. what happened to them. Find because out they, they made some awesome games, to be fair. They did. Well, they made Mag. Because they made that. Uh, uh, and they made um, SOCOM. Yes. SOCOM was an amazing game. I, I remember playing the hell out of that game. That was... Mm. The original Especially SOCOM, when, so hard, so... 
when you could yeah. use the headset to tell you and the voice controls. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> yes. That was that was once again technology just didn't run away. It should have. So cool. Yeah. It's because people don't want to. There'd be kids these days going, "What are you talking about, Grandpa?" <laughs> <laughs> you had to use your mouth like what? i feel like it's that that back to the future moment where he's back to the future 2 and he plays wild gun and you, go, you have to use your hands that's for babies yeah. Well, like, yeah, i feel like that's that moment right there, there you is. mean you had to use alexa what? <laughs> <laughs> uh, well that's enough <laughs> this week in gaming yeah. let's get stuck into the show shall we bit of uh bit of a game talk to get stuck into i reckon we kick it off with the game that everybody's playing and i know i've played it Bredge, you've played it have you played apex legends rem no no <laughs> no you sidestepped the mania have you yeah i have yes definitely <laughs> i think she's heard the frustrations that have come out of me while playing it yeah well they've just, just gone i want to avoid that it, yeah i mean you guys need to tell me about this because it's not it's not grabbed me so far. So tell me, is it worth me playing? Uh, you're asking the wrong person in me. <laughs> I'm oh, look. I'm so excited that the guys that created Titanfall have got this and it has blown up as big as it has. Mm-hmm. So I think it's Respawn, isn't it? Mm-hmm. Yeah. So all that I can see for this being a Respawn title is that You'll people will go and play it. They'll pay for the battle pass. They'll pay for the upgrades. They'll you know throw money at it the same way that they do with uh, Fortnite, and that'll give respawn some more coin, and then that'll get put back into this Jedi game. And booyah! That's that's where I'm looking at. So yeah, look, it's it's bought itself breathing space where EA won't kill them because they're not making money. Yes, essentially. But essentially, um, the game's pretty much a cross kind of between Black Ops and Overwatch, really, essentially. Okay. Uh, you've got your, yeah, it, you've, you've got it has your some sort of Mobery and... kind of features to it. Mm-hmm. Like the characters that you play as have that kind of feel to it. Like, uh, So when you first load into a game, you'll get loaded, uh, you play as a squad of three, which is a differing point in most battle royales you play by yourself or is this you play as a squad mm-hmm. and you'll randomly get lined up and assigned and a turn to pick a character and and you you can't pick m- m- more the character more than once so if the person who gets the, 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 the first person gets to pick from all of them and then what's left from there the second person gets to pick and then the third person picks last so it's a bit it's a bit like that uh, sort of uh, what's that game that I hate? Uh, Smite. It's a bit like Smite in that way. Smite. With, yeah, with, your, sure. character, with your character picking. <clears throat> you drop in like you do in Fortnite and PUBG and all that jazz. You'll have what is known as a jump master. So once again, a random person will be assigned the jump master position and he will launch, he, she will launch the jump and you'll jump together as a squad. Now, as you're going down, you have the option to split away from them if you want, but otherwise you'll stick together as a group and he and the per, the jump master will control your descent down. Now, you can ping or point out to a place where you'd like to go. Say, here, I'd like to go there, and another person might like to say, I want to go over there, and jump master might have his own ideas or he might just pick whatever else is, he wants to talk about. You'll drop in. And then this is where it just becomes battle royale you kind of think. You're just running, searching for loot, weapons, armor, equipment. But the good thing is you've got a squad to work with you. And each player has skill sets. Once again, this is where it becomes a bit more mobery kind of thing. Uh, so, like, you've got... How many characters are there? There's, I think there's... There's eight. Yeah, so you have six unlocked and then two behind a paywall. Yeah. So yeah. you have offensive players, defensive players, and support players, like you would in in like a squad kind of scenario. Mm-hmm. So you have Bangalore, Mirage, and Wraith are your offensive characters. 
Gibraltar and Caustic are your defensive players, and Bloodhound, Pathfinder, and Lifeline are your support players. Now, I haven't played them all, so I don't know the ins and outs, but essentially I played a lot of Gibraltar, who's the defense. He's he's kind of the tank, uh, heavy assault kind of dude. So he's got a passive thing where when he he aims down sights, he gets a shield. He can drop a bubble shield, and he can. And his sort of superpower is like to drop uh, artillery barrage, defensive barrage, on the ground kind of thing. That can kill your own players. Which, yeah, which can kill your own players. Don't <laughs> drop it on yourself. <laughs> which, which we found out <laughs> with Radicus the other night. <laughs> he, <laughs> he dropped it on a, um, on a supply drop that come in, mm-hmm. thinking that because some, like another team was heading towards the supply drop, it would yep. kill them and he could get the supply drop and get out. So he's yep. running along and there's all these bombs dropping down and then he drops them like, what are you doing? <laughs> <laughs> oops. Oh, oops, sorry, I didn't realise I did that It's like, oh, well, now we know <laughs> yep. So once boots are on the ground And you're, you, you're talking to each other You, you use your, your abilities to help each other out uh, when, Once you get into a firefight If someone drops it, it leaves like a crate Now this contains your loot That you're holding But also cre- holds... Uh, can't remember what they call it, but it's like a dog tag. Yes. Uh, so the can... enemy can go in and loot the crate and and piss off with the stuff. Or if your the rest of your squad kills the enemy, they can pick up your dog tag, take you to a respawn point, and pick you up. And then you can go back and pick up all your gear out of the crate. Mm-hmm. So dying doesn't necessarily mean death in this game. So the enemy has to drop you, and then they have to finish you off to kill you if they don't finish you off your squad can just come along and heal you Mm -hmm. Uh, it's like a bleeding out period Uh, and then and so on and so forth and that's pretty much the crux of it that's that's the bit of the battle royale I think I think the bit that I don't quite get is uh, like the specials so to speak Um, it's part of the reason I never really got Overwatch as well and Mm -hmm. It's you know I've I've enjoyed playing it with others, though I can't see me, you know, spending a great deal of time on it. Though it has been fun. Yeah. Look, I unlike other battle royale battle royale games because they're not really my thing. Mm-hmm. Uh, I, I I gave this one a good crack. Like I've spent per better part of three hours, maybe even four hours playing this game. And I, I still ascertain that I do not like battle royale games. <laughs> uh, they don't agree with me. I don't. I I've worked it out playing this game. I hate starting a game without a gun in my hand. Yeah. If I can't start shooting stuff, or at least attacking, have the ability to attack an opponent the moment that I see them. Uh. Yeah, I'm. I'm. I'm not having a good time. Uh, I if I have to run around and look for stuff first to have the ability and then get killed while doing it, that's incredibly frustrating for me. And I just, I just don't like it. And for the literally the majority of the games, that's what happened. Yeah. I was dead. Like a quarter of the games, I was dead before I had a weapon. There was probably another quarter where I was kind of dead within. No, I'd say the majority, the f- like 90% of the games, I was dead within the first two minutes of the game. And then there was a few exceptions where I, I almost, I was about eight minutes. Uh, I had a weapon. I got to shoot at stuff, but apparently I didn't do any damage. So I'm terrible at the game, clearly. Uh, <laughs> and, I, and I was killed. Yeah. So I, I've had, and and the thing, the stupid thing is, I like look at all the people I've been playing with, randoms and friends, and they're like at like level twenty, thirty, forty, and they've like got six kills. I'm like, so everyone's just leveling up from dying? Is that is that what's going on here? Like, so yeah, I'm, I, not, I, I, I'm struggling with the game a bit. Yeah, I'm not sure about a whole lot of it how it works, but mate, there's that many people that have jumped onto it and are absolutely enjoying it. So. Good on them. Yeah. 
The other thing I'm stop, a big stop playing about. Black Ops. Let me have a bit, a bit more. Fun. <laughs> Let me have a bit more fun. Get <laughs> yeah. your XP up while I can. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. The other the other thing I'm actually concerned about is uh, I looked in the store the other night while I was playing with Luke and as as a real. Mm-hmm. And I looked at the store, uh, and there's like premium stuff you can buy clearly right yep. so there's the, there's the, there's two types of currency there's in-game currency so currency you can only earn by playing the game and then there's real money currency okay now i was looking at the skins that are available in the premium section of the store and they have one character skin you can buy and then they've got two gun skins and then they've got like rarer versions, mm-hmm. rarer version skins for each of the guns that already have a skin available. Now, this is fine. However, this is where my concern starts. No, Kaz. The first. Not dollar reduce. Not dollar reduce. Well, well, the you, first. Well, just while I jump in there, Kaz, Radicus, welcome. Thanks for jumping in, guys. So, so the less rare skins uh, you had to buy with real money currency. Mm-hmm. The rarer of, skins. Yeah, what sort of sorry. price they got on them? Oh, uh, now you're testing my memory, but I think they were like. Like, what, was it excessive in your mind? Yeah, yeah. I remember yeah. thinking, I'm not spending that much money on it. Like, that's not happening. Uh, it was like, a, I think it was like. 1800 credits I think I worked it out It was about 20 bucks yeah. Like I'm not spending 20 bucks on On a skin Right A weapon skin Now The rarer ones mm-hmm. uh, Were You had to Use the in-game currency And like For the amount That it was It was something In the tens of thousands And like I've Gone like Five levels And earned 600 of these things so it's going to take a bit of grinding. Uh, they, they, they use the in-game currency. However, the rarer ones were locked and required you to buy the other weapon skin attached to that weapon before you could buy the rarer one. Okay. It's a bit different. Yeah. So it was like... Uh, so let's say the... the the, the rare one was called uh, Doom Gun, right? Mm-hmm. And then the rare one was Doomera Gun, <laughs> right? This, enough, this, is yeah. kind of, this is kind of naming convention they're going for, right? You would have to pay money, real money, to get Doom Gun to then also unlock the ability to buy Doomera Gun with the in-game currency. So essentially, it's even locking your in-game currency behind a paywall. Yeah, no thanks. So I just looked at it, and went, "Yeah, no, I'm out." And mm-hmm. and that to me, that's that's about as EA as this game gets. <laughs> yeah, unfortunately, it is. But that's probably not the only real controversy that's going around with Apex at the moment. And uh, controversy. I, <clears throat> look, I don't. I don't want to give this much airtime because for the simple fact that the people that are giving it airtime and the, uh, the people that are causing the controversy for it are doing it solely for the clicks, and I don't believe yeah, in that. Totally. So, so totally. the reason that... For, the, for well, the millennials? Yeah, well, take out... <laughs> you, you and I were talking Apex. about this last night. Last night. So yeah. what, was, what was the heading that you read? So... Uh... For the millennials out there, turn your ears on because old man is going to use new terminology and it's going to be funny as fuck. <laughs> Apex Legend is the most woke game mm-hmm. ever. <laughs> now, for those that are sitting there going, what's woke? Woke is, and once again, so this is where the old man needs to, needs to explain yeah, it because no one else yeah. knows what we're talking about. I don't don't know what you're talking about. Yeah, woke means you're aware of social issues. Oh, that's why I'm sleep. Okay, 
<laughs> yes. In this case, the reason that, and I'm going to explain why it's woke, that Apex is woke as, as the young people would say, two of the eight characters are, are of the LGBTQ uh, community. So mm-hmm. Gibraltar is a big gay Maori, and Bloodhound is what they they call a non-binary character. It doesn't. He. I'm, I got to be really careful what I say here because I don't want to get it wrong. Uh, the character does not pertain the, uh, to have a sex, so so to speak. It's not male yeah. or female. The character is not male or female. So gender binary. So gender binary. Thank See, you, Rem. The young, yeah, the youngest of the group. Yeah, no, <laughs> All right. Then on top of that, fifty uh, percent of the the, the non paywall characters are female, of which the percentage is two black females to one white female. So, once again, this is where woke comes into it. And then just the icing on the cake is that the, the two white male characters are the ones that are stuck behind a paywall. <laughs> so, eh, there we go. Hence why Apex Legends is the most woke game ever. Now, for me personally, I don't see the point. Uh, I get why people would would like, like this kind of thing, but for me, Apex Legends isn't really a story-based game. It's, it's literally... You don't get to see. You don't really get to see your character. Sometimes you won't even get to choose your character that you assign with because someone else will choose it before you. Mm-hmm. Uh, so you don't. You're not necessarily. I, I get the representations there, but you're not actually getting to play as that representation all the time. And and to be fair, there's no real story to the game. So therefore, the what their their persuasion is in this in this situation is kind of mute. Yeah, the, the way that I looked at this, and when I saw it all blowing up, and this is why I said I don't want to give it too much uh, airtime because it did blow up to the point where all these people are, are banging on about it. It's um, it. I don't think it matters. It doesn't. The, not, the, not what, and the, and not what people think or not what people do. That you know that matters to each and every individual in the way yep. that it matters to them. But for me, okay, that's that's nice. Um, what do they shoot? Yeah, yeah what do exactly. They do? What's what's their yeah. special? C- congratulations, you you you're in a gay relationship. Woohoo! That, yeah, fantastic. I I want to know what you're going to shoot. Can I can I point a gun at that and shoot it because that person's running across? I, I don't see why it has to be a big deal. You know the the whole reason behind everything that's going on in the world is to not point fingers. Is to not stand out is to be inclusive of everybody so yep. why are we singling out to say that this is what's going on yeah it, it shouldn't really matter but anyway yeah but it's enough yep. I, that's i'm done with it <laughs> <laughs> sorry uh rem yes i would like to talk to you about cube too please do because cube played with my head Cube <laughs> 2 played with my head even more. <laughs> and I know you played along with it as well. The I game, did, yes. not my head. All right. Yeah. <laughs> mm. <laughs> <laughs> um, yes. Uh, awesome game, hey? Yes. So uh, tell us a bit about it. You've, you uh, have so finished, yes? I Yes, I finished to one of the endings and I haven't gone back to do the other. I was um, so pissed off about the ending, but that's another story. <laughs> that aside <laughs> so if you haven't played it cube 2 is um i think lucas probably gave it the best sort of description it's very portal like in a lot of mm-hmm. ways in that you have that very clean technology feel you're enclosed in a room it's a puzzle and you've got to work your way through it yeah, except so instead of using your portal gun um you've got a yeah, you've got to move cubes around to to find your way through. Um, but, yeah, the storyline behind this was really interesting. I wasn't quite sure where it was going to go at first, um, 
but as you got sort of about I mean it sounds bad to say that but as I got about halfway through I was like oh this game is really interesting now <laughs> yeah it um, having said that it caught me very early on but that's because yeah. I still remember the first one and the first yeah. cube holds a bit of a special place for me because it was the first game that I reviewed when I started doing reviewing with mm. age uh, way sure. back when so it's it's kind of stuck with me and just for those that don't know cube stands for quick understanding of block extrusion so everything in the game is a cube it's made up of cubes think minecraft on a big sort of adult scale sort of ma- makes me think of like a white all white rubik's cube yes very similar <laughs> yeah, exactly <laughs> Except instead of moving the the bricks around, you're gonna change color. Yeah, um, change and color. Each, each, each color each has a different color. effect. Yeah, it does different things. So, yeah. I did you play it with the little ones around? I did actually. My mm. my four year old played some of it with me and uh, had minor struggles, but not not a great deal. Um, but he was he was having a wonderful time changing bricks back and forth between useful colours and not useful colours <laughs> and screwing me up. Um. <laughs> I, I have to admit, I, I played it while I was off over Christmas and uh-huh. um, played it with my little ones. And my eldest, who's six, she actually beat me to working out the puzzle on oh, about three occasions. Ah, when nice she's one. just gone, Dad, you've got to change it to that colour and put it there. And then it goes and it'll <laughs> jump up there. And I'm like, are you kidding? Hold on, let me try this. So what did you say to do? This. And so we walked through it together and it worked. <laughs> and oh, good on that. That was the first time it, it worked. I'm like, oh, my God, well done. You know, she, <laughs> she was absolutely chuffed and so was I. I was exceptionally proud of it. So yeah. <laughs> it was um, it was a good moment to, to actually have that because I don't get to have that a lot with the kids. Yeah, I mean, yeah. Yeah. It is hard to find those games that you can really just sort of sit down and enjoy with them, especially mm. when they're so young. Exactly. So what, what did you think of the story and how it played out anyway? Um, about halfway through, I became very intrigued, very sort of addicted to it, and I needed to finish it. Um, at the end, I wouldn't say I was disappointed, but I wasn't blown away with the ending. Um, now, without giving any spoilers, there was a choice at the end of the game sort of an ethical choice but i did you go good or i don't bad? know i think i went good mm-hmm. and you know I, I at the time i made the decision i sort of i felt really i guess a bit tense about whether i'd made the right choice or not but once i got past that point i, I don't know that it really mattered too much what did you think? <laughs> mm, I I had a preconceived idea of where I wanted it to go and how I wanted it to finish, and it did not meet that preconceived idea because I picked the negative one because mm-hmm. when I got to that point, uh, the voiceover came up and yeah. my kids had a feral moment, just just a moment where they decided to start fighting each other there and then. <laughs> And they, uh, I, I didn't hear what it said, so I had to make a guess of what I wanted to do. And I wanted to go the positive path. I ended up going the negative path and mm. was not impressed. Well, mm. I, I should say I, I was impressed with the ending. Like it, it worked in with the story, but yep. I wasn't impressed that that's what I got because I didn't want that. But Yeah, yeah. sure. Mm. Mm. We will have to uh, discuss this. We'll have to discuss it off air so we don't ruin yeah. it for anyone else. Because <laughs> <laughs> I am intrigued. I am intrigued yeah. to see how different it is because, like I said, at the end I sort of went, oh, I wonder if it was actually very different. Mm. Yes. All right, cool. We'll have a look at that. <laughs> uh, the other big game I've been tooling around with quite a bit this week and I'll get into some news about it shortly as well has been Rainbow Six Siege mm-hmm. so I've been rummaging around in that uh, why I've picked up playing it so much more is 
oh, it's it's just become an easy game for me now. Well, not, not easy. It's always hard. It's difficult you're playing against other people, but it's an easy game to pick up and play. You know, I know most of the maps. I know every control. I can, you know, it's just, it all becomes muscle memory after a while. And so it's, uh, it's, it's been quite good. Uh, I'm, I think it was either last night or the night before I jumped into a I, I got put in a game I was only, only single stacking with randoms and um, got put into a game where it was our, our team was losing 2-0 out of mm -hmm. best of three ended up coming back and winning 3-2 and I got the most kills MVP thank you very much <laughs> and that was awesome <laughs> and it uh it come back quite nicely and it's because it was on a map that I knew inside and out and was able to just take all the points the way that the teams that were playing was they were both trying to rush each other and so my team would run in and rush down one side of the building I'd come in the other and start shoot, shooting people in the back so they were focused in front of them and he come around the corner so I just cleaned up a number of times it was uh, it was quite a bit of fun <laughs> But uh, speaking of muscle memory in games, Gregio, you've got a bit of Horizon 4 ticking around. Totally. Uh, yeah, that's, mm -hmm. that's, probably, that's probably true. Muscle memory. Uh, so uh, the, the, uh, I, play, I played what I normally do, you know, the Forzathon and then the delivery stuff. Then uh, there's a new car available. In on the seasonal events, it's the super hot hatch seasonal, and you can get the Hot Wheels Mustang is available to win. So those of you that are playing and haven't got it yet, uh, mm -hmm. by the time this comes out, it'll be too late. Now I've just thought about that. So hopefully you get it. If I didn't, I'm sorry. Um, I just thought about that. Then this comes out after that's long gone. So I apologize. <laughs> Put I've it up on it. the page. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, I will. Um, I'll do that. Uh, so actually my weekend gaming has been pretty car centric so uh, Forza Horizon 4 I started playing spin tires on hardcore that's how much I love this game mm -hmm. uh, I'm really enjoying it it's a lot more challenging uh, a lot more stress inducing uh, I'm making I won't say I'm making more mistakes I think the game is just a little bit more punishing and therefore the mistakes are coming out so yeah, I'm making more mistakes. Uh, <laughs> I'm like tipping trucks over and having to fix that up. And in that in itself, while it's frustrating when I first do it, the sense of achievement I get from fixing it up, uh, yeah, it's really enjoyable. The new game I started playing this week was a mobile game called Car Mechanic Simulator 18. Car and Mechanic Simulator is, 18. So would that be you just sit there and swear at your phone for three hours? Yeah. Uh, no, this is... Not quite? This, no. Pay yourself that, not that would, <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that would... They've removed that part of the simulation, I think. Oh, okay. Where you bust your knuckles. Real. Real. Where you bust your knuckles and swear at the car. Uh, yeah, look, my knuckles, my knuckles are kind of thanking me. Like, So for those that don't know... I used to be a mechanic in a former life, uh, and therefore, so I, I, I got a good idea of what this game should be if it's mm -hmm. going to be a car mechanic simulator. I gotta be honest; it's actually really good. Uh, so, what happens is, it's kind of like a, a Wheeler Dealers episode on steroids. So you go, you find cars that are busted up and broken, you bring them back to your workshop and you repair them and then you flog them, all right? The the repairing is broken up into two sections. You've got the body work. So you'll have to rub back and fill the rust spots and then respray the car. And then there's the engine chassis repairs element of the car. And it breaks down into very detailed elements of the car, like down to the bushes detail, right? So I, so you'll have to go through, remove all, all the broken pieces, and yeah, there's there's like a layered system, so you can't just sort of go, I'm just going to pull out the spark plugs. You've got to pull out the, the, 
the, the leads and pull the covers off and mm. get in there and and like you can break this down quite heavily uh you then you buy all the parts that you need and replace them and then put it all back together and then you flog the car and you make money and as you make money you're able to unlock more tools which give, allow you to do bigger jobs uh and therefore work on uh more cars awesome. so at the moment uh, i've sort of I've unlocked the, f- the second level, the third level sort of toolkit. So I can work on anything from like a little hatchback through to like some early six cylinder muscle cars that are sort of floating around, which I'm enjoying. So can't wait to get into the V8s though, naturally. <laughs> that's what um, it is. For anyone that's wondering, that's- you're playing it on iOS? Yes. It is available on Android. I just double checked yeah. and I thought I'd hit the install button. Yeah, give it a crack. Yeah, uh, look, it's it's one that I I'm I'm into the simulators at the moment. So you either love them or you hate them. They're either your jam or you're not. So give it a go. It's free to play. So chuck it on there. Have a crack. If it's not your thing, delete it. If it is your thing, thank me mm. next week. So yeah, awesome. sounds good. All right, Rem, take us on a trip down memory lane. Memory lane, yes. We've got Spy- so Spyro and Crash. Yes, so I, I waited a long time to get my hands on these. So, <laughs> Spire of the Dragon trilogy and um, the Crash Bandicoot Insane trilogy. Mm-hmm. Uh, these these are the, like the first games that I played, other than maybe Croc uh, on PlayStation One back in the day. Jeez, oh, dude, it it brings it all back. It really does. Other than the uh, the graphics being remastered so nicely it feels exactly the same as it did back then um and i have not only been enjoying it myself but i've been getting my two boys absolutely hooked on it (laughs) um my four-year-old loves spyro especially Mm -hmm. um he loves playing the dragon game and my two-year-old runs around the house trying to blow things with his fire breath (laughs) which is hilarious (laughs) (laughs) Um, and yeah no they're absolutely as hooked as i am um the voices i'm i'm unsure as to whether they've kept all the same voices for the dragons or not they seem very very similar if they're not um but it's you know it is it is great it is beautiful um it has the same charm to it that it used to um and it's as easy to pick up and play as ever uh as for crash bandicoot yeah yeah as for Crash Bandicoot, again, they've remastered, but they've kept it, the soul of it there. And that game is as infuriating as it ever has been. <laughs> it is rage-inducing, but it's also great. And I know that the rage-inducing is because I'm just too much of a pussy these days with gaming. You know, we get we get so many save points, we get things given to us on a silver platter so much of the time. And we get those, oh, is this game too hard for you? How about I bump the level down? too often that you know we go back and play these games and they're ridiculously difficult yep but so determined to beat it so so determined i'm just waiting for the bridge (laughs) with with crash it had just come up on the screen snooks put down the controller walk away yeah that's that's my (laughs) level of break your tv (laughs) yeah that's that's my level of platformer don't make me say it again put down the controller walk away and i'd have to do that yeah, no, I, I totally get it. I mm. do. I totally get it. But it, it is purely, I think, that nostalgia that keeps me there. And I go, no, no, I've beat this before. <laughs> and, you know, <laughs> um, phew, I, I don't even want to say how many years ago. I've beat this before a long, long time ago. Um, I can do it again. I'm going to do it again. But it's like it's those stupid little timing things that get you so often with Crash Bandicoot. Yep. So there's – there's one level I'm doing at the moment and you've just got to jump your way up the wall. Um, and it's I'm just missing it by like a fraction of a second and I'm slipping down the wall and killing myself and ruining the 16 lives that I've collected for myself. And it is, it's absolutely rage-inducing, but I know it's all down to me and the timing. Mm-hmm. So, um, you know, that's, I'm that's sticking when with you- it. That's when you can take the rage. You can go, okay, yeah, it's rage-inducing, but it's because of me. 
Yeah, so exactly that's, right. That's okay. That's what Cuphead was like. It's like, I hate you, but I must exactly. beat you. Yes. <laughs> All right, well, well, I've only got one other game that I'll talk about, which is a beta that um, Gregio and I played this weekend. How about you let us know about Unraveled 2? Oh. That nice, cutesy <laughs> little... You know, I, I watched a video about Unraveled 2, mm-hmm. and it was... I can't remember the name of the person that, that did the video, but pretty much they were, they were playing two-player, and mm-hmm. every time one jumped onto the back of the other. <laughs> They'd go, oh, could you just imagine Santa next to him? It'd be like... <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> so now that's all I see. Yeah, that's, I've had the same thought before. I'm like, that is kind of gross if you think about yeah. it. <laughs> it kind of looks cute, but... <laughs> yeah. It's only cute because it's yarn. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> No, I'm loving it. Unravel 2 is so cute and it's it's fun and it's like it's still challenging, but it's it is super fun. I'm looking forward to playing this as co-op a lot more um, mm-hmm. because I mean as Greg and I said a while back, you know, this game would be great to speed run, especially with two people if you're well enough practiced <laughs> to get it seamless would be amazing. But even as is one person, it is it is awesome. They've it's such a well thought out game. Um, not only is it cute and beautiful, but the puzzles can be incredibly complex at times or deceptively easy. Mm-hmm. Uh, they're, they're always the uh, best ones when you sort of you've got to put it down for twenty minutes or so, and you come back and you go, "Oh God, that was so easy." Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just oh, you're overthinking one hundred percent. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, you just have to think of a new tack. And mm-hmm. yeah, I mean, I. I I almost raged on one level where there's a, a turkey that chases you. So if you're anywhere on ground level, it just eats you. <laughs> um, yeah, so you've got to run fast. You can't slow down. You've got to get over the obstacles. You can't miss anything that you're supposed to land on. Um, and you've got to stay out of sight or you've got to use one of your little yarnies to distract while the other one completes part of the puzzle and then swap <laughs> until you can both get your way through so it, it's quite challenging but yeah no, a, a great example of of how well they've used these two yarnies together um to complete all the puzzles and to make you have to use them both for a fair amount of the game yeah. um it's always a bit of a relief when you can sort of pick each other up and run like <laughs> it's like oh shit i've done that bit. <laughs> now i can move on um the other part that i wasn't aware of until i actually bought the game for myself was that you know the lighthouse which is the hub um which lets you go from level to level there's actually also these challenge modes that you can go and find um and they are they're wicked hard because you don't get any hints um you're not timed unless i think you choose to be um but they are incredibly difficulty they difficulty difficult <laughs> um uh, even on uh, level one, say so level one, two, and three, I believe, um, even on level one, they're tricky. And like, there's one that I spent probably a good half hour on and just couldn't work out the very last part. <laughs> so I could get one of my yarnies up to the end, mm-hmm. but the other one was stuck. Like, <laughs> I could not move it on. It was like it's the yarn between them was stuck between these two poles and I couldn't move my yarny through that gap and then the the pole sort of swung away into such a place where the other one couldn't help me so so I was absolutely stuck I spent half an hour on that one raged I rage quit that one I definitely rage quit that one Um, sounds like a rageable one that's that's fair enough yeah 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 but you know it it's it's good though because I I still come back to it I still play it and I'm I'm still determined I'm gonna beat that level (laughs) I've just gone to do something else first. And T walks in the room and goes, Mum, you just move that over there and then you done. Yeah, yeah. Shut. <laughs> Get to Let your me room. Have a go. Let me have a go. Yeah. I can't jump, but I'll figure it out. <laughs> All righty. Well, the last thing that we've got to uh, to talk about gaming wise has been the Division Two beta. Now, anyone that listens to 
uh, or sorry, anyone that's had a look on our YouTube channel and our Facebook page would have seen that uh, Lucas has put up a a little bit of a tidbit of uh, of the beta and and how it's playing and what it's doing and all that sort of stuff. And apparently, I've got to be nice and not just love it, even if it was a turd wrapped up in a blanket eaten by a rabbit cat and thrown up that was then eaten by a rabbit dog or something along those lines that's <laughs> <laughs> so, quite detailed I, I just looked at it and went thanks bastard and <laughs> so i i was going to go full fanboy on it just to just to rub it in, into Luke, well, just a little bit i'll tell you what mm -hmm. you go full fanboy because I'm going to level you down. <laughs> I'm no, going to bring you back to the ground. You, you okay. don't have to. You do not have to. Uh, the game itself, it is very similar to Division 1, which... I was, I was going to say, I can sum this up in one word. Hmm. Same. Same. Well, it, it is same. the same. <laughs> and and I'm, you know what? I'm happy with that. I was going to say, am, is that a bad thing? I am, no, sometimes no, no, I am no, so I, happy I, with it. It's, it's tweaked... It, and like I, I played a lot of the division. Um, it's I think it's my my most played game that I've got on on the PlayStation. And so the the second one coming along, I was always going to enjoy it. I looked past a lot of the little niggles and things that a lot of people made big issues out of in the original, and a lot of that stuff they seem to have learnt from from things I've been seeing online. The end game. Notice that I said things that I've been seeing online. The end game stuff is is very good. It's very different. The reason I say I've been seeing it online, and this is a bit that pissed me off. Every time I went to play over the weekend, servers were down. Yeah. Now I know it's a beta. <laughs> I know we are a little tick on the butt crack of the world when it comes to gaming, but. Every night of the weekend for the for the release of this beta, which is the only time that I can really get in front and have a go, the servers were down for, you know, one, I think on Friday night it was down for about four hours. Saturday night it was close to three. And then Sunday night I think it was about two and a half that it was down. And this was prime playing time from like seven o'clock onwards. So... That was the frustrating bit. So I got very little time to actually play it. I think all up I only played about four, maybe five hours total. And so I didn't get to see a lot of it. I didn't get to play the Dark Zone at all. I didn't get to do any endgame stuff. I just tooled around the city and had a lot of fun. And I did enjoy it. You know, it seems to be that it's, you know, it was a well done beta. I did have a lot of glitches. Uh, a lot of problems with the sound, which was pretty much uh, generic. Apparently, um, Xbox was the better, uh, the better of the setup originally, and PS4 and PC was just a shit fight when I was playing on the PS4. It it worked better for me. I still got the occasional sound glitch, but it wasn't massive. Uh, but yeah, other than that, it's it's the same, and that's exactly what I want. I don't care yeah. if people are calling it the division 1.5 but i just want to make my same agent get back in there and get it going again relive more of the story and continue to carry through because it's a cool story and a cool world as well yeah do you do you feel like the pve is going to be more extensive than division one or is well, it probably going to be as the pve has been tweaked for a fact that the division was always a cover-based shooter that's what it was yeah. branded to be but you never had to do cover-based shooting if you were yeah. someone like me that enjoyed cover-based, you were left behind because people were just walking down the middle of something, just shooting. You can't yeah. do that this time around. Right, sure. Because the the AI is smarter. They will flank you and they will come around behind you and uh -huh. they they hit hard. So yeah. Even same level as you, they will critical hit you and yep. and drop you very quickly. So... There's there's a lot more of that team tactic going on and a lot more of that cover base going on, which I liked. Yeah, sure. Hmm. Okay. Anything you want to add, Greg? We had a bit of a run around on it together. Yeah, we did. And to be fair, that's that's all I got to play uh, mm -hmm. for the weekend. 
Uh, so my issues weren't with the game. My issues are with Ubisoft and how they run betas. Yeah, yeah, you had a uh, bit of fun trying to get or them. Don't. <laughs> or, or, or don't run them. Like the the whole code thing. Like I get why you do it, but it's so not very easy to do. And and I, I don't just say this about the Division Two. I had this the Division Two. I had this in Division. I had this in uh, what's the Viking game? Uh, For Honor. Honor. So this uh, and uh, Ghost Recon Wildlands. Mm. These are all Ubisoft titles that I've had to play. That I have had trouble with getting codes and getting them either getting them from friends or getting them from Ubisoft directly or whatever. Um, and then having to then using your account and then getting the emails and I've I've sent angry uh, tweets to Ubisoft only to find that 30 seconds before I press send the thing comes through and like then I just look like a dick <laughs> <laughs> and then like it, it's just it's it's frustrating Ubisoft get your shit together it's not hard <laughs> like, it's really not but for some reason you guys make it hard and yeah I'm I'm getting tired of their bullshit to be honest. That's my two cents worth. Oh, like other than that, they, they that's do what really, really grinds my gears. And that's what really grinds my gears. Like I've not, I've enjoyed every single one of those betas I've played, mm-hmm. but getting into them is the bit that infuriates me. Mm. Where the game, where it's broken, like that's the bit that's broken. Mm. So, well, keep keep an eye out. Division is launching on the fifteenth of March, I believe. Mm-hmm. And I get a couple of days early, so keep an eye out because I'm getting a nice, pretty statue which I'll unbox and reveal to everyone a couple of days early. So keep keep it locked right here. Yeah. All right, guys. Uh, any other games you you want to throw out there? If you've thought about along the way, or no? Okay, no, not particularly. Not this week. Not this no. week. <laughs> That's it. All right, Moral. Uh, let's let's throw into some news, shall we? Rem, we'll kick off with you. Microsoft Ooh. Game Studios. Yes. I hear they've a had a bit, of a bit of a tweak. They have. So mm-hmm. uh, there was a broadcast that came out from Xbox um, oh, not too long ago now. Um, it was and they were in, Inside about, Xbox. Inside Xbox, yes. the first one of the year. Yep. That's right. Um, and they were talking about rebranding Microsoft Game Studios. Mm-hmm. So it's not a huge change, but... Now they're Xbox Game Studios. So the only reason really um, we can ascertain for this is that they're simply – they've had so much growth with Xbox itself that now Xbox is such a large entity it sort of needs to step away a little bit Yes. Um, while not stepping out from the umbrella of Microsoft. So the, the VP, Matt Booty, said the reflection of how the, the Xbox brand itself has been expanding. Now they've taken on – 13 studios I think they've got now. Mm-hmm. Um, it's, yeah, so it, you're going to see some changes. They're not going to be big, obvious things, but I guess next time you get what would have been a Microsoft Game Studios game, it'll now be an Xbox Game Studios game. Yeah, that's it's interesting because... Oh, going to have to change their logo figured, that we've known for so long. Uh, oh. It won't be hard. <laughs> well, the thing is, I, the thing that I find interesting is, up until now, um, they could turn around and market their Microsoft games to the PC world as well. But now, now that they're, they're making it an Xbox thing, I, I, I mean, I, I get this crossplay and all that jazz, and you still need Xbox Live to crossplay, even if you're playing on PC. Yeah, but it just seems like there's. They're stepping away. From the, it, for some people, it might feel like they're stepping away from their ownership of PC gaming uh, and moving. I mean, I think you know. I think yeah. they're really pushing the the Xbox side of PC gaming as well. Because when you when you do get one of those crossplay games or uh, the Xbox Game Pass games, anything like that, to download them on PC, you're downloading them from the Xbox app. Yeah. So yep. you go into the Xbox app and you download it all through that. And that's how you start it, uh, and so it's all run. It's all an Xbox thing now. So I think they're just sort of they're pulling all that branding in under the the one Xbox banner. Mm. So 
it's not a big change, but it's it's enough to just no. get away from that. Yeah. I, I think, too, you know, whenever you hear Microsoft, it always sounds very corporate. Yeah. You know, yeah. whereas Xbox is more for the fun. Mm. So maybe yeah. that's I mean, the fun zone. The fun I'm, zone. I'm, I'm very curious as to, to what minimal changes this will have. I mean, un- underground sort of work is going to have to change a little bit in the company. Um, mm-hmm. But whether it will give a little bit more freedom to fill in the team um, about the things that they are doing. I think so. Mm. Yeah. Sounds good to me. Yeah. All right. Well, I'm going to kick on with some news for Rainbow Six Siege. So we've had, first it started off as a rumour with just a little bit of a picture on Ubisoft's page. And then it's been confirmed that Rainbow Six Siege is finally getting some Australian operators. Yay. Now, this is where the rumours come in. Two operators named Gridlock and Mozzie. <laughs> I don't know. Really? How. Really? Really? Did we expect anything less? <laughs> no, well, I liked your one that we spoke about before the show, which was to call, call the bloke Boomer. You know, yeah. as as head shakingly sticks, as every Australian would just, imagine. yeah, exactly. Every one of us would just shake our head and go, "Oh my god, yeah. Boomer, thank you." That's just putting another another thing on the Australian agenda. Uh, yep. <laughs> but the fact that they want to call one of them Mozzie, yeah, what's what what's their what's their gadget? You know, is if- it just something that pitches puts out a high pitched squeal? You know. Maybe like I, maybe. Well, maybe 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 they're, maybe, they're, mm. maybe they're a bio a bio weapon specialist. They just they just jump in through the window and take blood. Yep. If if they, if we're gonna have they give the enemies uh, Zika virus so they can't procreate, <laughs> which means they can't respawn. Ah, <clears throat> oh, but, there but you can't do anyway. So. But if we're gonna have Mozzie as an Aussie one, uh-huh, uh-huh. then we're gonna have um we're gonna have to have Midgies. For, for for the UK. Like, it's true. <laughs> and have yeah. to have some Pommy and Scottish characters called Midges. Or, or Bumblebee. Bumblebee. Oh God. The world's yeah. this is least lethal worse. bee. Yep. Least lethal bee. <laughs> Fucking passive as hell. <laughs> to be fair, of all the insects Medic. that they could have named, like, there, was, <laughs> there are plenty of other bad... Look... Australia is known for its badass fucking animals. Yeah. Yet for like some reason Taipan. we ended up with mos- like Taipan or, you know, Redback or yeah. Paper Wasps. Funnel Web. <laughs> yeah. It's plenty yeah. out there. Hell. Great White. Irukandji. Irukandji. What a. Yeah. You could, right you could there. have it. You could have a set of twins called uh, Redback and Redbelly. <laughs> you could. Yeah. See, that could work. It's rumoured to be set in northwest South Australia. Northwest South Australia. Yes. So just not east. <laughs> What's in northwest South Australia? Mm, Nothing. Isn't that, isn't that where the bloke put all those people in barrels? <laughs> oh, no, yeah, I know. Maybe. <laughs> I, I, I don't know. It's. I, I think that's where they did a lot of the... Um, uh, they did a lot of testing back in the day, like it's a big military area up around there. Yeah. So it's, really? yeah, I think so. There's, there's really not much a conservation park and a conservation park and a national park. <laughs> that's, that's, that's it. I, I reckon <laughs> it'd, be, it'd be something to do with either the tracking station or... Uh, or the military base that's down there. It's all, it's all rumours at the moment anyway. The the full reveal will be, uh, I think it's February 19th, uh, at the R6 Inv- Invitationals that are going on. Look, to be fair, I'm just glad it's not in the Opera House. <laughs> like, you know, something like a badly done Opera House. Yeah, that'd, that'd be poor, wouldn't it? Yeah. Hmm. See, back in the 90s, that's what they would have done. Yeah, Australia, I think... You got to do it in the opera house. Yeah. You got to run across the bridge together. Because that's all Australia to get is. Um, you know, it's right next door to that big rock. I, I just, I just really hope because Australia does have a very long and, um, I suppose the right words, gloried history 
in regards to the military forces. And yep. it's, um, I just hope they, they look at something like that. Like they, they, they take that into account. So it's not cheesy. And please, if you're going to use voice actors, use us. <laughs> just just get, put the get money get in and just hire Hemsworth, Hemsworth all right? Yeah, get, yeah, get one of the Hemsworths to do right? it. There's, there's plenty there. Just, just buy the bullet. You and can just, even get one of the cheap ones. It'll be fine. <laughs> <laughs> just just get Australians to do the voice and, and make sure you consult some of the Aussie people in it because the yeah. last thing you need is something, you know, some player walking out with an Akubra with corks hanging off it. Look, I hear Craig McLaughlin needs money. Jeez. Yeah, and he's about as Aussie okay as you get. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> He, oh, he might even throw a song in, Hey Mona, for like shits and giggles. <laughs> can have a new soundtrack. Oh, God. No, we don't want that. <laughs> like to, the next, to the new level. Hey mm. Mona. No. Stop. Sorry, kids. Leave it alone. <laughs> hey, kids. Well, I know how much you, you young folks like horses. Well, here's a, here's a new one for your club, club anthems. You need to look up. Craig McLaughlin's Hey Mona because it's just as good in my opinion. Rem, AC Odyssey. (laughs) (laughs) Moving on. Uh, (laughs) Yes, so AC Odyssey is getting Game Plus this month. New Game Um, Plus. New Game Plus, yeah. So there's no exact date said yet, um, Mm -hmm. just the month at this point. Um, we should get some more info next week about it. Uh, there's nothing said so far as to how it's going to affect your gameplay, like whether you can change your protagonist or keep your lieutenants that you've recruited while in the story. Um, but, I mean, it, it's it's always good to have a tougher mode, I guess, <laughs> for those of us who have actually managed to finish the game. <laughs> 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 On a side was that, note was that, that a dig too. at yourself or a dig at me? It was absolutely a dig at me. <laughs> okay, good. Because I haven't finished it either. Uh, have you started it? Yeah. Oh, you I have? I think so. Have I? I know how much of an AC fan you're not. <laughs> yeah, I, I tried. That's yeah. the one with... Um... The Greeks. It's the Greek one, not the Egyptian one. No, I can't. I've done the Egyptian one. Yeah. <laughs> Origin. So, No. Okay. So no, yeah. I'll just, so, I'll just sit yeah, over no. here in the corner quietly. <laughs> <laughs> uh, um, on a side note to that, though, the, the third and final episode of the First Blade DLC is coming soon. So they've had two of them so far, and I have not played any of them because I haven't even finished the main story. But <laughs> for those who have, the, the third and final episode will be coming very, very soon. Awesome. Well, uh, Mr. Greggio, game's coming out this week. You've got a, a few you were telling us about before. Yeah, so this week, uh, and once again, by the time you get this, they'll be out. So, you know, surprise. <laughs> um, <laughs> all right, just, so, just that surprise everyone's watching. Yeah, exactly. <gasps> so tomorrow is February 12th. Uh, so Trials Rising is out tomorrow. Ooh for those that like Trials, and I know that I, I, I'm a fan of Trials, Luke's a fan of Trials, you're a fan of Trials. Who's me? Debs. Yeah, aren't you no, a fan of Trials? Trials can take a dirty shit. But no. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's one of those rage-inducing games for you. I have never raged as much as I raged at the original Trial. <clears throat> Get good. Wow. I like twisting the controller while Luke's chuckling in the background because he's already finished and I'm up to 25 minutes. Scrub. So, everyone, in the comments below, let us know if you'd like to see a video of Snooze playing Trials. Yay! <laughs> yeah, that, it, it might be amusing. It might also be illegal. <laughs> it's amusing for five seconds and then it's fucking then, scary. Then, then it's frightening, <laughs> yes. <laughs> All right. Uh, moving on. Uh, the 15th of February, uh, there's actually quite a few games coming out. It's like D-Day for games in February. Was that the so, 15th, was it? The 15th. Yeah, because you've got to be nice. So, just 14th. after Valentine's Day. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Smart thinking. At least it wasn't the 13th. 14th? 
No, I'm no. saying you know when you know what goes on right. the day before. Don't worry, I'll yeah, yeah. So you're busy okay. on the day. Yeah, yeah thanks. No, no, thanks for that. <laughs> it wouldn't have mattered either way. All right, so we got <laughs> Crackdown Three, Far Cry New Dawn, Jump Force, and Metro Exodus are all dropping on the 15th. Wow. So it's yeah. a big day. Oh yeah. Mm. <laughs> for people that like, uh, it's you know, expensive food, day. Uh, that's that's gonna be hard, you know. Hard choice for some people, especially if you're into post-apocalyptic shooters. Oh. Just have to work out whether you're a capitalist or a communist. Yeah. <laughs> I've never played any of the Metro games, so I'm not too fussed about that coming out. Uh, mm. The new Far Cry, I'm... I'm interested? Bit, well, I'm interested, but I'm also torn because the old one, like, well, Far Cry 5... I enjoyed it and I finished it, mm. um, but a lot of that frustrated me. Mm-hmm. Uh, the way it was done, and and it was predominantly the um, the daughter, sister, her drug induced um, part of the story that that annoyed me. Mm. So this being. You know, set after X amount of hours of X amount of years after the end of five, uh, and from early reports, it's people have been saying it sort of rivals three. You know, it's like a throwback to to the level of of what three was at, especially with like Vars. Mm. Hmm. Interesting. So that's that's the early reports anyway, and that's what I'm hearing about the place. Uh, so yeah, like right. I said, I'm, I'm a bit intrigued with how it will go. I don't know if I'll be picking it up because, quite simply, I've got that much coming up that I just don't have the time to play it and, and to get fully involved into it, which is what I like to do with Far Cry games. So yeah. I will get it eventually. But, yeah, for now, I'm just intrigued to, to see what people think. Yeah. Hmm. And, yeah, and then we got Crackdown 3, which Lucas has already had a crack at. Had a crack and crack down yes. the by the time uh, by the time you're hearing this, um, our review I think should be out. Yes, I've got, to, I've got to double check when we're allowed to to release it. But um, Lucas will be will be setting that up to to go live as soon as it's available to. Yep, you're right, Snoogs. If you are listening to this, then the review for Crackdown Three is available now on the Aussie Games Experience YouTube channel. Go check it out. Thank you very much. And then yeah, Jump Force. So all those. Anime lovers out there, if you want a battle royale game of, I shouldn't say battle, you can't say battle royale anymore because that infers a type of game now. Mm. If you want an all-out <laughs> fight of anime characters in the one game, yeah. you struggled there. I did. I did <laughs> got derailed after I couldn't use battle royale. Funnily enough, a Japanese concept to begin with. But uh, <laughs> anyway. Awesome. Jump right. Force. Play it if you like it. If not, meh. Don't. 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 <laughs> Wise advice from Aussie gamers right there. <laughs> That's the kind of advice that you guys pay for. That's what we get. <laughs> awesome stuff. Well, I've got some, some not so nice news coming from the world of Activision Blizzard. Now, by the time this goes live, we'll know more information, but at the moment it's... Uh, hearsay and, and sort of expected in the next two days to drop. Uh, there's apparently big layoffs coming ahead for Activision and Blizzard. Uh, people are saying that it's going to number within the hundreds. A lot of it is very likely to come from Activision side of the Destiny staff. Mm, yeah, I thought that might the, be the case. After the Activision Bungie merger fell apart earlier this year. And a lot of people have kind of been left in the dark about it. Uh, there's been a few things going around that Activision Blizzard itself made something like $1.6 billion profit last year. But they've still got these massive... Obviously, with uh, Blizzard hasn't released a new game since, I think, 2016, which was Overwatch. Uh, they've released, obviously, re- remakes and, and expansions and things like that, but they haven't actually released anything new. And Activision, we've known, has had a bit of a sordid history recently. So uh, that's that's what's what's being said. One of the big things about it, though, is that 
a lot of the a lot of the Blizzard guys seem to be very worried about what's going on, and especially those people in sort of sales and marketing, uh, as as well as PR, because Activision is getting more and more of a stranglehold over Blizzard instead of them working under the one corporate banner as two separate entities. Activision are getting more of an influence over Blizzard and the Activision uh, gaming model is being pushed across onto a lot of the Blizzard stuff that's coming through. So that's what a lot of people are saying. Like, again, this is all hearsay at the moment and just stuff that I'm reading around the place, but that's that's where a lot of it seems to be coming from, unfortunately. Mm. So it's very sad. Yeah, yeah, it, it is very sad, and especially when... You know, a company that's that big and is making that much, you know, profit, and it's still not enough to yep. to help people that were that were doing their best. Especially if it is people from, you know, the division, uh, the destiny type, destiny, of, destiny side yep. of it. If it's those people that are going to lose out, you know, they were doing their best working on a game that was, unfortunately, you know, the model that it was following was not very well received. The game itself, mm. you know, I enjoyed it. Um, but I know a lot of people didn't. But again, it's just uh, it's not not fun to hear about something like that. No, no, it 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 really frustrates me these kinds of stories, especially from companies this size. Because in in my opinion, uh, downsizing and cutting of jobs just means that somewhere along the line someone didn't plan for for a transition in project mm-hmm. staff staffing transitions in from from projects into another project and and for me that's just poor poor forward planning uh so and there's no excuse for a company like activision to have poor forward planning but i think it's just one of those things for most of these companies they're fairly new like I say that genuinely, they're not they're not exactly old companies. Mm-hmm. Uh, gaming industry isn't a very new uh, isn't a very old industry, and a lot of these companies have are reaching their peak in size, if you will, at the moment. And and you, there's only so far you can go up before you have to have a bit of an implosion because you get too big. But still, there's this level of forward planning has to go into that and I'm hoping moving forward from some of these ugly stories we're getting over the last 12 months or so um, these companies will start to think about those things because yeah. there's, there's there's no excuse for it as far as I'm concerned. Yeah, 100%. Just um, in the chat as well, Radicus has asked, didn't Black Ops do well? Uh, apparently Black Ops was one of the best-selling games of 2018. That's another thing that just sort of throws a a question mark into to where this is coming from but obviously Activision has such a very portfolio that there's a lot of those those areas that are being sort of scrutinized and one of the things that I did read that apart from the Destiny staff other staff that are looking at going will be you know like I said before the sales and marketing guys it's not going to be a lot of the actual development staff that will be going uh, if any at all so Anyway, by the time this goes live, we'll uh, we'll have heard more and uh, check out the page. I'm I'm sure there'll be some information up about it. Uh, Rem, last bit of oh. news: Monster Hunter Worlds. Yes. So, if anyone's been missing the uh, the White Wolf of Rivera, um, Geralt is coming to Monster Hunter World for a crossover event. There's currently one that's underway. Mm-hmm. It's called. Uh, contact trouble in the ancient forest and i believe as part of that you can get your hands on some witcher gear uh there's the witcher silver sword the necker armor the cursed staff for palicos um they've also got a second crossover event which is coming which Mm -hmm. is following on from contract it's woodland spirit it's between february 15th and march 1st and you have to be a hunter rank 50 or higher but if you're completing this, you'll get to get some crafting of Siri armor and weapons, which will be freaking awesome to run around yeah. Monster Hunter World with. Will, will they be the, Monster Hunter esque? 
So are they going to be like 12 times the size of you? <laughs> um, I don't think... I think they're going to be pretty comparable to your, your normal Monster Hunter World characters. Mm-hmm. Um, but it, it would be... It would be awesome to have some some fucking witcher silver sword that's you know ten times your size. <laughs> yep. But I, I'm not I'm not 100 sure on that. That's um, about to see. Yeah. Uh, yeah. But the, does the your nice Siri part... armor give you directions when you ask for it? <laughs> no. Right. <laughs> I'm just sitting here close. If he gets close stuck, eyes, and with this head. monster just going, yeah, yeah. all right, hang on, how do I beat this? Hey, hey, armor. How do I beat this monster? And then it comes up and goes, I have this for you. <laughs> I'm sorry. It comes I don't up. understand the term. It, it eh? comes up and goes, get good scrub. Yeah. <laughs> um, but one, one nice little tidbit on that too is that the original Geralt voice actor was invited back to play Geralt through the Monster Hunter world um, levels. So that's kind of cool. That is it's really nice cool. to see that they're bringing the man back. <laughs> So if anyone's if anyone's keen, it's it's currently going on Xbox and PS4, and I believe PC is not far behind. Awesome, sounds good. Hmm. All righty, well uh, that's it for news, guys. So let's get into some last words. All right, well last words. Uh, I've got a bit of a shout out this week. So these guys have been active on the page and helped out with a, with a few different things as well. So a quick shout out to Alec, Kev, Ashley, and Mitch, and thank you very much for your help and jumping in and just being a part of the community. Uh, of course, as always, too, I will bring up our agents, which are this crazy bunch. There's a couple of them listening tonight, and of course, uh, quite a few people over on Discord that is part of our agents group. So if you want to become an agent, head on over to our Discord or that's where it's sort of run from, or just become, you know, more more involved. If you'd like to get more involved and, and be one of the agents of age, then just uh, get in touch with us and we'll let you know what to do. All right, guys, you got any uh, any last words you want to go through this week? Hmm. No, n- n- Nothing not that thought? I have pre-planned. No? <laughs> Rem, anything from you? Uh, no, it's good to be back, that's good all. Good to be back. It's very back good to be back. Life. I mean... It's very sad that I missed out last week, but I am very glad that this week I can breathe and I have a voice. So that's an improvement. That's good. <laughs> that's always good. Uh, well, other other things that I want to plug. Don't forget about that other show with uh, with Lucas that uh, scratches his podcast itch every now and again. He throws up a an episode. Be sure to check that out and uh, let him know what you all think. I've got a shout out as well that I want to do, which is something that we're sort of being a bit more involved in as the year goes on and on. I've been talking with a lot of people that are a part of it as well. So the Australasian Gaming Podcast Network. So mm. th- these are these are some guys and, and girls that I've met up with on, on Facebook, uh, a few different podcasts that are gaming podcasts from Australia that I listen to are all part of it. And be sure to, yeah, check them out on Facebook and support some Aussie guys if you like listening to us I'm sure there's someone over there that you'd enjoy listening to as well well that's it from last words I reckon it's about yep. time to uh, finish up the show guys do it do it if we have to if we have to <laughs> well thank you very much to everyone that has listened to this show and especially those that are still listening this far along a super special thanks to our live listeners who have been pretty tame tonight I must admit hey We've got Kaza, Radicus, and Skrill has just dropped in right at the end. I'm sorry, Skrill. After the show, I'll tell some filthy jokes that I found and at least give you a laugh. Gredge, Rem, as always, thank you for being here with me. If you guys weren't here, I don't think I'd be doing it because I don't want to listen to myself for an hour. The (laughs) (laughs) The beauty is you don't have to. You just talk and then... Yeah, but Let everyone gonna, else listen to you. Then I'm just going to listen to myself me. talk for that time. That's that's bad yeah. enough being in my own head. Yeah, so listen, Thank you guys talk. for coming along. <laughs> no worries. Lucas, everything you're doing in the background, mate, thank you very much. To all of our listeners, feel free to continue any of the topics that, you just, that we have discussed on this show on our Facebook page 
or on the Discord channel. If you've got to get, if you'd like to get in touch with us, shoot us an email at info at theagexp.com. And don't forget to leave us a review or a comment on your preferred listening platform. Or you can now leave us a comment on our website. Links are all in the short part. Let's try that bit again. <laughs> links, are, <laughs> links are in the podcast show notes and description. That's all from me. And as always, I am Snooks. I'm Ramusa. And I have been Reggio. Thanks ever very much, everyone. I can't talk now. Bye, I'm going. <laughs> Go to sleep. Go on. Peace. <laughs> Ooh, okay, that's the end of this week's podcast. And if you found yourself shouting at your speakers in disgust or maybe even in pleasure, make your way over to our Discord server and make a comment in the appropriate channel. Failing that, you can also have your say over on our Facebook page or you can just tweet at us. Searching for the Aussie Games experience will usually lead you in the right direction, but you could just use the set of links that are in the show description. This podcast is available through Spotify, Apple Podcasts, Stitcher Radio, iHeartRadio, and plenty more. Thank you very much for listening, and we hope to see you on the next episode of the official podcast of the Aussie Gamers Experience. Experience.